Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. This is Runtrell, AKA Queenly Vibes. So, just jumping back on guys, because you know, there are times when I have a lot to say, you know, so there's a lot going on. So I just wanted to come on and give my opinions, give my thoughts um, about the Meghan Markle, Oprah uh, Winfrey, and Prince Harry um, interview. Also, just wanted to um, give my thoughts and opinions about uh, Sharon Osbourne and her behavior towards her uh, co-worker, uh, Miss Cheryl, okay? So I'm in my car, you know, just a change of scenery, you know, just I had to be out and everything today, so just wanted to come on and get this video done so i hope that everyone is doing well god bless um before we get into it excuse me please uh like share my videos and everything and subscribe to my channel okay thank you so much anyway so my thoughts about um megan markle uh, the firm, all of that good stuff, Buckingham Palace, the Queen, uh, the Royals, all of that. Th this is my thing. Let me come up a little bit. This is my thing with that, you guys. Honestly, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this first and foremost. I do feel really, really bad for um, Archie. I do feel bad um, for Harry to a certain degree. Um, I do feel <sighs> slightly, um, I don't know. I don't know really how to say this, you know. Um, th okay, this is this is how I feel about the situation. Like I, like I said, my heart really truly goes out to baby Archie and the unborn child that's on its way because honestly I feel like their parents have put them into this position that they're in you know that they shouldn't be in here goes guys um I feel like from the beginning Meghan Markle knew what she was getting herself into I mean that that's just me I, I knew from when they started dating, when they got married, um, watching the, you know, the wedding and everything, I can just clearly see that, you know what I mean? Like there was some tension and, and just, you know, good Lord, she's a really good actress. I mean, she was able to hold it together, um, you know, throughout that whole wedding and everything and just keep this, you know, smile on her face and everything. So, I don't know. I just knew right from the beginning that it was a lot of shadiness going on. But let me tell you where I feel honestly where Megan has gone wrong is that she she knew from the beginning what she was getting into with this family. I'm sorry to say. Like, I don't know what she wants from us. It's like now it's kind of like, OK, you go off and do something and you pretty much knew the consequences behind it. So it's like now you want sympathy from the whole world. You knew what you were getting into. Harry knew, you know? So I, I, I just don't get it. You know, do I agree with um, her kids not having any, um, you know, rights to the, to the throne or, you know, being a, the proper heirs or what have you absolutely not you know no i don't agree with that um her you know their kids should have the same privileges as william and kate's children you know or all the other children before them they should have all of those rights you know but however megan i honestly i feel that she you know that she just thought that she, maybe she could do a little bit better than Princess Diana. You know, I, I just don't get it. 
how in the world could she possibly think that, you know, after all of what Princess Diana went through, and this was, you know, a, a white woman, a white woman that had all of these issues with this family, with the rules over there and everything, she was completely miserable, you know? As far as I'm concerned, Diana was just, she was my princess, or, you know? I feel like she was America's <laughs> princess. Let's just put it that way, you know? And, and there's no other princess that can pretty much top her. You know, so like I said, my thing is, why would Megan put herself in that predicament? She just felt like she was just, just gonna be this beautiful, charming woman to just charm the, the Windsor family and that everyone would be putty in her hands and that she can just do whatever she, you know, pretty much wanted to do, that she can charm. She had already charmed Harry and I felt like she thought that she could play nice and be beautiful, sweet and charming and just uh, charm everyone over there uh, connected to the royals and, and all of that. I, I don't know what she was thinking. You know, I, I do feel like Megan was very calculated. I feel like she was very calculated. She got what she wanted, she got Harry, and I knew right away she would start having children. I knew that. I mean, you know, she is almost, you know, 40 years old. You know, she's not wrong to do so. But however, I feel that honestly, that she was very calculated. And I think that now she really truly sees that since things aren't going her way, you know, she she just doesn't want to deal with it. She doesn't want to be there. She doesn't want any parts of it. Her children won't have the same rights as the other children. You know, so her her point is, it's like, why why should I be bothered with this and go through hell and, and not have all the same rights? You know? And I kind of knew right from jump. I said, you know what? She, she's married, you know, she's gonna marry Harry and she will not stay over there. I honestly feel like she, you know, had that plan the whole time as far as with dating him, that she would marry him and get him to move over here in the US. I felt like that was what she wanted to accomplish. You know, if, if she can have all of the, you know, the same perks to, um, you know, the air and, and the titles and all of that, but just live here in the U.S., that's what she really wanted. You know, she wants the fame, the fortune, the, the air, all of that. She wants, she wants it all, but she wanted to be here in the U.S. She's an American girl. You know, and to say that, oh, she never Googled about the royal family and all of that, just complete lies. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I, th I think she's a very smart girl, very calculated, and I think she knew exactly what she wanted to do. She had her eyes set on Harry, you know? So... <laughs> I, I, I just don't even know why, why do the interview with Oprah? Even with Harry, my thing is with, with Prince Harry, you knew what your family was about. You know, you saw what your mother went through and, and you know, and all of that. I mean, I, I really just don't know why he thought that these people would change. Right? I, I just don't get it. And to be honest with you, I really just does I don't think it's safe for them to be here in the US. I, I just don't agree with it. I don't think it's safe. I don't think it's a wise decision. You know, it needs to be, they need to have major um, security protection for them, for their, you know, their children. I just don't, I don't think it's safe for them to be here. I think, and honestly, I think 
you know, maybe after a while, but I believe that Harry will go back. I believe he will go back to the UK. I definitely do. Um, I, I don't know. I, I really just don't know if this marriage is going to work out between uh, the two of them. I don't know if their marriage will, will stand. I mean, you know, they're leaning on each other now and all of that. But I, I just really don't think Harry made a, a good decision. I'm, I'm sorry. And I don't know. I think I think Megan felt like I think Megan really truly I think she lives her life as a white woman, even though she's biracial. I think she passes for a white woman. And I felt I feel like um, because of the way she looks, you know, being fair skin, you know, complected that I don't know. <laughs> Excuse me. I feel that she felt like she could just get away with that and that everyone would fall in love with her and you know she can have her happily ever after that that's honestly what i think you know she wanted that princess lifestyle you know the happily ever after uh, you know to run off in the sunset with her prince you know and she can't tell me that you know she just didn't love the the fame behind that not to mention the fortune and everything else that goes along with uh, marrying someone of royalty right I mean come on who are who are we kidding here she wanted it all she wanted it all I mean she could have just stayed over here and just kept working as an actress building herself up you know, she's a beautiful girl and all. I mean, of course, she would have went on to, to get married, to have children. You know, she got caught up in a fantasy. I think she wanted to be like the first person of color um, to, you know, to, to marry Harry, to have his children. I believe she just really wanted to be the first. She loved everything that goes along with that but she bit off a little bit more than what she can chew you know let's be honest and and for prince harry to just give away everything i just really don't think that that was a a smart choice you know and i do pray for them i pray that all goes well or what have you but i don't know i just don't think that that was a wise decision honestly i think he should just go back over there get back in good with his family take his his heir position or whatever it is <coughs> excuse me i don't know i don't know why he just couldn't have married the right type of girl to live out the legacy of his family i'm i'm sorry <laughs> like why cause yourself that type of trouble? You know, it's different from over here in the U.S. and everything. And, you know, but it's like, really? Like, why why bring that type of trouble to yourself? Now, the children are innocent. You know, the baby Archie, he shouldn't have to, you know, go through this. You know what I mean? He doesn't understand now. But now you're bringing children into this that, you know, may potentially have to suffer because of their bad decisions and choices that they've made. I mean, because they're, they're not going to bully these people. It, it can't be done. Those people have been like that since forever. Harry knows this. You know, but everyone is saying, oh... He, you know, he's standing up for his wife and this and that. Well, now he doesn't have a choice. But he made a very bad decision. Megan made a very bad decision for herself. Anyways, <laughs> I know some of you may agree, you may disagree. You know, um, just just bad decisions. You know, 
and this Pierce Morgan guy, you know, it's up. He's upset because he feels as if, you know, um, he probably wanted to date her, and she snubbed him after she started dating Harry or what have you. I'm pretty sure she was never even attracted to him. You know, of course. I'm <laughs> and and not to put him down, you know, in that type of way, but I'm just pretty sure she wasn't attracted to him and just probably wanted to be friends and, and hub nush and, and hang out with people of that caliber or what have you. Anyhow, so now he's trashing her because she don't want to have anything to do with him. You know, which he should back off. You know, if, hang on, it's really noisy right now. <laughs> If, if she doesn't want to be bothered with him, it's just like, let it go, move on. There's tons of other beautiful uh, biracial <laughs> women that he could date or black woman that he can date or whatever. Just, just get over it. Move on. Anyways, so I got that out of the way. Whew. I, I just couldn't wait to talk about that. I'm just like, really? I knew it. I knew from the wedding, it's like, oh my God, this girl have stars in her eyes and she just really think that she's going to be able to pull this off. Listen, sweetie, if Diana didn't do it, Fergie didn't do it, it can't be done. Diana was the princess. That's it. That's it. I don't, I don't even pay attention to Kate and William. I mean, they're just whatever. They're so, they're so boring and, and you know, I, I'm not going to say too much, but yeah, we don't pay attention to them. It was, it was all about Princess Diana. It was all about Diana. That's it. She was graceful, elegant, beautiful. She wasn't a racist. She was an awesome humanitarian. She, you know, I think she had a crush on Michael Jackson. That was my girl. Who, who doesn't have a crush on Michael Jackson as a woman? <laughs> you know, it was, it was all about Princess Diana. I, I was so distraught when she passed on, you know, anyhow. Best, best wishes to Megan and Harry, you know, but like I said, it was, it was a bad decision. It's a bad decision. Anyways, let's move on to Sharon Osbourne. <laughs> I, I was thoroughly disgusted by Sharon's um, outburst. I was disgusted. It was like... Um, <clears throat> it was like her true colors came out. I mean, I don't understand why she got so, you know, okay, you're friends with, with peers or what have you. Okay, that's fine. But I mean, Sharon was really defending him as if the man was her husband. I, I think she got a thing for him. That's, that's just my opinion. I think she got a thing for Pierce Morgan. And trust and believe, if her husband passed on or what have you, I think he's still alive. She would, she would go for, she would go for peers. I, I think that's her. I think she got her eyes set on him. I mean, she was like, it was like steam was coming from out of her ears. You know, she was turning red. It was like she was turning into this this little monster or something. And I'm like, wow, really, Sharon? Really? It's like you, you're 68 years old. Um, you don't know anything about the struggle of black people, of what we have to face, the discrimination, what our, you know, our people have gone through out of your whole entire 68 years. Sometimes it's not about the N-word 
or being disrespected in that way, but it's about the subtle racism. You know, and, and sometimes that can hurt just as just as worse. You know. Anyways, then she's screaming at Cheryl, educate me, educate me. Tell me, it, you know, it's like. <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed the way Cheryl responded back to her. I can imagine all of her emotions on the inside, Cheryl. But she handled that really, really well. She handled that very well. So, bravo to you, Cheryl. And keep your keep your head high. You know, um, how dare Sharon uh, act out in that manner, you know, in the on the workplace. Right during their show, she's reprimanding Cheryl. You know, in other words, like trying to put her in her place. Don't you dare. And don't you dare start to cry. I should be the one to cry. But you cry for what? What happened to you? What, what, why do you need to cry? If she can cry, you know, it, hey, it's her party. She can cry if she wants to, if that's how she felt. What do you mean you should be the one to cry? You have nothing to cry about. That's not your husband. You know, yes, okay. You want to be loyal to your friend, but you have to view things on both ends. And just because you say you're not a racist doesn't mean that racism doesn't exist. You know, and at, at Sharon's age, if she doesn't know the subtle racism or, you know, certain things, I, I just feel bad for her. I feel bad for her. It's because she doesn't want to know. She doesn't care about it. It's not her life. She doesn't really have to deal with it. She lives her life as, you know, the rich white woman that she is. She, you know, she's enjoying her privilege and her life. What does it matter for her? Honestly, I think I think she should have been suspended for a couple of days just for that that outburst. I think she should have been suspended. If not fired. It was just so disrespectful. I mean, she's making the workplace. She made the workplace at that particular moment very hostile, very uncomfortable. The same things that uh, Megan does sometimes over there on The View. The good thing about it is Whoopi knows how to handle her when she had one of her brat attacks or whatever. I, I was just disgusted in watching Sharon. It, it was just her, it, it was her anger. It was just, she might as well said the N-word. I, I would have felt better if she would have just said the N-word to to Cheryl and got it out of the way. <laughs> Just tell her what you really think, Sharon. You know, come on. You're almost home. Say what you really think. So anyhow, Cheryl's an idiot. If she thinks, you know, if she thinks that Sharon is her friend, she's a freaking idiot, you know, and, and she needs some help, you know. If she thinks Sharon is a friend, she's a very desperate woman. She is desperate for friendship. There's no way that I would be, that I would even call her a friend. She's my, I would say my coworker. She's not a friend. Her fr she's friends with Piers Morgan. Soon to be her baby daddy or something. I don't, I don't know what the heck was wrong with Sharon. She was snarling. She was like a little, like a little troll or something. It was just disgusting. It, w it just wasn't a good look for the show. 
anyhow, I hope they talk to her about it. I hope those girls over there can get it together. I don't know. I, I really pray from this moment on that Cheryl opens her eyes and, you know, um, it's supposed to be a show based on, you know, <laughs> everyone has their opinions or whatever the case may be. But if I was Cheryl, I wouldn't get too personal. I wouldn't get too personal. I wouldn't get too close. I would say how I feel to a certain degree and, and just let it go. Just let it go. There are some Caucasian people that refuse to truly understand what racism is about and how we feel. This is not about making Caucasian people comfortable. It's about expressing how we feel as black race of people. What it means to be black, what it means to be um, dark skin, light skin, light brown, whatever, high yellow. What, what does that mean in this world? The discrimination, the hate. You know, and that's why Harry and Megan, they thought they could get away with that because she doesn't really technically look black. She's, she's passing as a white woman. She's passing. But at the end of the day, a, a white person will always let you know you're black. And it's a blessing. It's, it's, not, it's not a bad thing. It's a blessing. This is how God created us. The same as them. Our black is a blessing. You know, and there are blacks who are who are racist against white, against whites. I don't agree with it. I hate racism, period. However, in order for us to to heal as as a people and if, if certain people want to get educated, you really have to take a mile in our shoes and have an ear to just listen to the things that we say without putting yourself in the situation to be the victim. You're not, you guys aren't the victims, okay? And what Sharon displayed, she displayed that white woman who doesn't really wanna tackle racism, but when it comes up, she wants to be able to play the victim first. Because, you know, sometimes it's, if certain things aren't surfaced um, to where you can really pinpoint to say, oh yeah, I, I, maybe I was racist or what have you. It's okay to sweep it under the rug and, and just really not deal with it or talk about it. And I think that's why Sharon got so upset. On the flip side, again, Megan, Harry, they made they made bad decisions. I don't know. That's all I can say. Anyhow, <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Thank you all for chatting it up with me. See you next time. God bless. Take care.